Good day, everybody. My name is Alejandro. I'm going to present you the results of my undergraduate work, and the title is Frequency and Spectrum of Mutations in the BRCA1, BRCA2, PALB2, P53, P10, CHEC2, CDH1 genes in women with breast cancer from three cities of Colombia. I am part of the Infection and Cancer Group at the University of Antioquia, Medellin, Colombia. And the director of the group is the professor Gloria Sanchez. This is the whole team behind this work. So, if we talk about the epidemiology of breast cancer, we need to know that this cancer is a really health problem worldwide because there are a lot of cases. We can see that the incidence rates are higher in the high income countries uh, compared with the low income countries. This can be due to um, a better way to diagnostic the cancer or so on. We don't really know. But uh, if we look at the mortality rates, we can see a different relation relationship because the mortality rates are higher in the low income countries compared with the high income countries. Uh, this can be due to the access and the treatment for this breast cancer because the health system in the high income countries can be better than in the low income countries such as Latin America. If we talked about the incidence and mortality in Colombia, uh, we can find that breast cancer is the first type of cancer diagnosed uh, in women here in Colombia with uh, around 14,000 cases for 2018 according to Globocan. And we can see that the number of deaths are <clears throat> like uh, 50,000. So there are big numbers. So if we talked about the anatomy of breast cancer, we need to know at least some structures to understand the places where the breast cancer arises. So we have uh, the lobules uh, where the milk is produced and is secreted to the lumen and then the myoepithelial cells uh, contract to help the milk to go out to the nipple and uh, the milk uh, go through the ducts that are important uh, for this transport of the milk and if we analyze the data we can found that the ducts are the main place where the breast cancer arise uh, the lobule breast cancer is really weird so breast cancer is a complex disease so it means that a uh, environmental and genetic factors uh, contribute to the development of this type of cancer. However, around 5 to 10% of breast cancer cases are hereditary. And this is due to germline mutations in genes such as BRCA1 and BRCA2 that are the major genes for this type of cancer, but also other genes that uh, contribute to cell cycle and double strand DNA repair, uh, such as CHEC2, ATM, PLB2 are involved. We have uh, some common variants that uh, give some risk for the development of this disease. And however, the more than the 50% of breast cancer cases are because variants that are not discovered or even epigenetic changes in the methylation of the DNA. The frequency of pathogenic mutation in breast cancer cases depends on several factors such as the presence of other mutations. There are mutations that arise from a common ancestor uh, the number of genes evaluated, because if you evaluate more genes that are related to breast cancer, you have more chances to find a pathogenic mutation. The technique for detecting this mutation uh, being the next generation sequence is the best approach for detecting uh, this variant. And the selection criteria of cases, because if you select women 
with a family history of breast cancer with an earlier age of onset of this disease you have a higher probability uh, you have a higher probability to find this kind of mutation the frequency of these pathogenic mutations in breast cancer cases have been uh, evaluated in Colombia. However, only a few studies have evaluated this frequency in unselected cases, with results that vary from 1.2% to 42.2%. These studies have mainly focused on BRCA genes and they have used panel of mutations and high-risk cases such as those with uh, an earlier age of onset and family history of cancer. So the aim of this study is to determine the frequency and spectrum of mutations in seven genes in unselected breast cancer cases from three cities of Colombia. So we extract DNA from white blood cells because we needed Germline DNA, then we perform an amplicon approach because we needed the exons and intron boundaries. We prepare the libraries and we sequence the exons and splicing regions of the seven genes with the IOTORN platform. We have 135 cases. We perform the quality control of the raw data, then we align these reads to a reference genome with TMAP. We perform the variant calling with the torrent variant color, and then we, the variant annotation was made with the ion reporter software. We also perform a mixed ligand dependent amplification for long genome rearrangements uh, for the BRCA1 gene. But uh, after having the variants, uh, we needed to know the clinical significance of these variants. So, uh, we look for some databases like CLINBAR, 1000 Genomes, OBD, the UMD, and we also use some bioinformatic tools such as uh, W Interval that basically apply uh, applies the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics guideline for classifying the variants. So we use the databases and some tools. So as a result, uh, we found a frequency of 4.4% uh, pathogenic mutations. Uh, six patients carry a variant uh, with clinical significance. We can see here in this table that uh, two of them were nonces, uh, three of them were intronic because they modified the splicing and we have one missense mutation in a uh, really conserved alanine. This is the classification with the different uh, databases and interestingly uh, four of these six mutations uh, are not reported in the Colombian population so we can say that they are new for us. We also found uh, 17 mutations of uncertain significance. Um, we perform an in silico prediction uh, for knowing if that they can be pathogenic or they tend to be more benign uh, with different uh, predictors such as FAM, Polyfem, HBAR, Pruvian, and the metapredictor Rebel. And we found that one variant in the Shek2 gene has a great pathogenicity in silico, and we should uh, perform in vitro studies to, to see if it can be reclassified. On the other hand, uh, we found uh, 20 variants with no clinical classification. So, we look for the frequency in the in some databases such as a thousand genomes, a genome AD, and we apply the ACMG guideline uh, for classifying these variants uh, with the two interbar. And we found that only two of them 
were banning and the other remain of uncertain significance. We found one variant that shows a high frequency in the Colombian population compared with the frequency found in the databases around the world. So it is interesting, but it is an intronic variant that is so far away from the splicing region. So it can be an indirect association, maybe a low risk variant. We also wanted to know the clinical features of the carriers because According to the gene mutated, we can find some pathways and some type of tumors. And as we can see here in this table, two of three BRC1 carriers have a triple negative tumor, and the other one has a strong receptor positive status, but PR and HER2 are negative. Uh, the two BRCA2 carriers are ER and PR positive, as we expected according to the other studies. And interestingly, we found that the TP53 mutation carrier has a HER2 positive tumor, so it means that maybe there's another pathway uh, or this driver mutation can arise a different type of tumor uh, because there is a different gene mutated. Uh, we can see here that the age of onset is really early. And only two of them had a family history of breast cancer. And this is really weird because this kind of mutation, especially in BRC1 and BRC2, tend to be a really high penetrance mutations. And we can see here that the majority of the patients uh, are from Medellin. So as conclusions, we can say that we found a frequency of carriers of 4.4%. This is the first study in Colombia that evaluated other genes than BRCA in unselected women with breast cancer because the vast majority of the studies have focused on high-risk women with breast cancer. Uh, we found three splicing variants, so it is necessary to include intron exon boundaries in the target of the sequencing. And we found that this variant, the SHEC2 gene, has a great pathogenicity in silico, so it can be reclassified, but we need in vitro studies to confirm the deleterious effect of this mutation. And in this slide, I want to thank the Infection and Cancer Group. They, there are a lot of people behind this work. Uh, of course, the University of Antioquia, uh, Universidad del Norte, hematoncologos in Cali, the National Institutes of Health in the United States, because the Michael Dean's lab uh, provides us the platform for the next generation sequence, uh, the International Agency of Research on Cancer in France, because they helped us a lot with the recruitment and the resources for the patient. Um, my colleagues, Gina, Shalom, uh, William, and so on. And I want to thank especially uh, the Professor Gloria Sanchez because he supports me in all this research and in this way to be a good researcher. And of course, a student council symposium for giving me the opportunity to share with you the results of my work. And Thank you so much for your attention.